gives me life abundantly. I will forever praise your name. You are God, you never change. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. 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 The love you gave has made a change. Never be the same. I will worship your holy name. You are God, you never change. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. 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 It's your blood that cleanses me, gives me life abundantly. I will forever praise your name. You are God, you never change. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. 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 The love you gave made a change, and I will never be the same. I will worship your holy name. You are God, you never change. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. We thank you, Father, that it is your blood that has made the way for us that we can have that life and that more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. We place that fresh covering of your blood upon us right now this evening, Lord. Open up our hearts for all you have in store for us, and we give you all praise, all glory, and all honor in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We welcome you to the Father's house. <clears throat> Oh, the river of the Lord is flowing in me, flowing in me, flowing in me. Oh, the river of the Lord is flowing through me, flow through me, oh Lord. And I will dance like David and I will shout for joy. I will sing to the Lord. I will dance like David and I will sing. Shout out to the Lord, oh the river of the Lord, flowing in me, flowing in me, flowing in me, oh the river of the Lord, flowing through me, flow through me, oh Lord, and I will dance like David and shout for joy. Oh, 
the river of the Lord flowing through me, flow through me, O oh Lord. And I will dance like David and shout for joy. I will sing it to the Lord. I will dance like David and I will sing and I will shout out to the Lord. I will dance like David and I will sing unto the Lord. I will shout, I will shout, I will dance like David dance, I will sing unto the Lord, I will shout, I will shout, and I will dance like David dance, I will shout for joy, I will sing unto the Lord, I will dance like David dance, I will sing and I will shout unto the Lord. I will dance like David dance. I will sing unto the Lord. I will shout. I will shout. I will dance like David dance. I will sing unto the Lord. I will shout. I will shout. And I will dance like David dance. I will shout for joy. I will sing unto the Lord. I will dance. Lord, and I will dance like David dance. I will shout for joy. I will sing unto the Lord. Like David dance, I will sing and I will shout unto the Lord. Yes, I will sing and I will shout unto the Lord. I will sing and I will shout unto the Praise the Lord. Sing it over. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sing it over. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord. Over. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord. 
Worship your home. 
that you've called upon me, those things that you've asked in faith, those things that you're believing for. I am moving mightily, mightily on your behalf, but I cannot move if you do not move in faith. For if you have not faith in your heart to believe, your prayers do not enter into my throne room. But come with the faith Come with the faith. Let your faith come before me. For I hear faith words. I hear faith moving. And when I hear it, I act upon my word. And I bring forth the things that you desire. Fear not the things that are going on in the world. Let them not trouble your heart. Be not fearful of the cliff, for it's not the cliff that shall destroy my church, for nothing, nothing shall destroy my church. It could destroy your nation. It could destroy the world, but it will not destroy my church, for the very gates of hell cannot prevail against my church. For it is I, your Father God, that watches over it, that takes care of it, that protects it. My angels are ready to move. They wait for a word for me. So fear not these things. They will trouble the world greatly. Many disasters shall take place and come to pass. Many before the beginning of the new year. For it is not a good time because of what the people have done. But I say unto you, fear not. Put all of your trust, put all of your faith in me. For I will take you through this time victoriously. I will give you the victory. I will make you the overcomers. That you can walk in faith. That you can bring your family into the faith that they'll not be left behind for it's as if Abraham had prayed for you and my angels moved mightily to deliver you out of this they shall do that and you shall be delivered but the world shall not be delivered know my word study my word understand my word for when the church goes, I pour out my wrath upon those that are left. There is no second chance, as I've told you before. Prepare your house. Make your house ready. But above all things, above all things, put your faith in me. not know saith God that I am searching yes even upon the whole earth to find those that are searching for me for it is my heart saith God to reveal even the very secret things that others do not know unto those that are searching do you have a searching heart this night for I will reveal myself unto you in magnificent ways in ways that others cannot see, in a way others cannot understand. But it is my desire to reveal myself to you. 
And I will show you those things that you might be comforted, that you might be strengthened, saith the Lord your God. Seek me, search me, and I will reveal myself to you that you might know who I am and all that I am and all that I have for you. For I love you. For I love you, saith the Lord, with an everlasting love. Those that seek me, I will reveal myself to them. For you are a diamond in the rough. Yes, you are. Do you understand a diamond in the rough? Many do not even recognize a diamond that's in the rough. They only recognize it when it is polished, when it is caught, when it is formed, and when it is made. Then they see the true diamond. You're a diamond in the rough. And I'm working, I'm working, I'm molding, I'm shaping, I'm causing your life to be all that I, your Father God, said it would be. I'm causing the shepherd boy to rise to the giant killer. I'm causing the maiden to desire to sit at the feet of Jesus and feed others with the word that she feeds upon. I'm calling out to those that need a touch, that need healing, that need deliverance, that need all that I have. I'm calling to them. It is their time. It is their hour. The sand dial is almost empty, and it does not get turned over again. The time is late. Make sure you're inside the house of safety before the light is turned out. Because when the light goes out, there is no light. There is no guidance. There is no help. But I say unto you, I desire to bless you. I desire to reward you. I desire to lift you up on high to make you a searchlight not for you to find the way, but for others to find you, for others to come unto you, for others to seek you out, that they can find what you found, that they may walk in the joys and the blessings that you already have, that they may walk in those that are yet coming, that they can be blessed going in and blessed going out, that they can be the head and not the tail, that they can be above and not beneath. That is what I've called you for. So don't fret that you're just a diamond in the rough. For when that diamond is polished, when it is cut, it shall sparkle like no other diamond that has ever been saw before. Press in, I say, press in.
Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living word, Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. Ya la de ya la ondria bo ho ya la kraya mahola de dia ba ho so yo 
No yo yo loco de ya bojo ya la nada ya bojo yo yo lando ya la 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 bojo si la ne ya la tara ya bojo si la cariri para pedir ni morri ya bojo si la Andrea la cara pe ya la tria bojo si yo lo tria morri ya bojo si la Andrea la tria me ya la no ya ca ya la Andrea la cari di di vivi di di coro ro no no morri ya bojo si via yo lo un coro ya lo tria bojo ya la tara ya bojo si la Andrea la tria ba de ya la coro ya bojo si yo lo tria bo colori ya ba la tria ba si di di via ne ya la la tara ya la tara ya ba ho si la Andrea la coro ya ba ho si la Andrea ba mi ya la coro ya ba la tria ba ho si la Andrea ba la tria ma ha tria ba di ya la tre da di di bria 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 Water gushes out. It's the most pure. It's the coldest. It's the most fulfilling. And those that drink from it grow and grow and grow. They flourish like none others. They become what the water brings unto them are you drinking my water are you allowing my water to do its work in your life is that water doing all that has been sent to do are you everything everything that I have said that you could be if not why not if not, press in. Press in. Come closer to the fountain. Come closer and drink. 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 For as you drink, the closer you get, the greater, the greater, the more pure, the more perfect the water. Learn. Learn. Set at the well and drink. Set at the well and drink. Set at the well and drink. with that same water for the river of the Lord is flowing nearby and consider saith God how you indeed prepare yourself it, is your cup ready are you ready to receive and are you not the cup of the Lord <laughs> therefore I say unto you my children receive for the river of the Lord is flowing. Woo! Yes. Praise the Lord, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? 
Praise the Lord. Are you receiving of him? Is your cup open, ready to receive? Praise the Lord. Pastor Dennis. <clears throat> yes, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. <clears throat> Powerful words and uh, just something good to chew on and meditate on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We'll receive our evening offering tonight. Bless the Lord in our giving. Thank you for faithfulness and doing all that God has called you to do. Father, we ask you to bless gift and give it her tonight. We thank you, Father, that you're meeting each and every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. Let it soak right in. Let it fill your soul. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. Let it so right in, let, let it fill your soul. A new wine from heaven coming down. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. Let it right in, let it fill your soul. This new wine from heaven coming down. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. It's a new wine from heaven coming down. Let it soak right in. Let it fill your soul. This new wine from heaven coming down. Let it soak right in. Let it fill your soul. This new wine from heaven coming down. Let it soak right in. Let it fill your soul. This new wine from heaven coming down. Let it soak right in and fill your soul. <laughs> it's been a long time since we sang that one. <laughs> wow. I don't know where, how far that one goes back. <clears throat> a little ways. Praise God. Isn't the Lord good? Wow. We thank God for all he's doing. Just remind you, uh, this week, uh, of course, Wednesday, Bible study and prayer. And uh, Saturday, Women's Aglow. 9.30, uh, there's a number in your bulletin here if the ladies want to go. Um, my wife, I believe, will be going, and uh, she'd love to have some others join her too. <laughs> Amen. It's, uh, it's a good time. Uh, so uh, if you want to join her, why, uh, oh, you're welcome. Praise God. It's only $10 at the community restaurant here in uh, Cortland. Praise God. All right. All right. I believe, Juanita, are you singing tonight? Come right along then, dear. With tomorrow being Veterans Day, um, just want the Lord to bless all the veterans that are watching, Pastor Evans, and my, uh, my family of all the ones that have sacrificed and served their country. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Yeah. But boy, Father, that was the knife my father gave.
Holy Spirit spoke to me to bring this song tonight, so whatever he wants me to do, and I am just so grateful to him. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. I'll tell you, sometimes it seems like my trash is getting smaller. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Thank God. So good. So good. Glory. What was I preaching on this morning? Reversing the curse and escape the faith. Notice I said escape. Not escaping, but escape the fate. Glory. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. The first how many verses, verses are the blessings? 
You need to look. Because there's far more that relate to the curse than to the blessings. And yet God wants us to walk in the blessings. And we talked about the time that the people come to Elijah because the water was no good. Everything was dying. The women were even barren. Nothing. And they said, this is a beautiful place, you remember? I mean, it's just beautiful here. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the place. But there is something wrong. And they came for help. Glory. And then God moved, because that was the scripture, that God moved in a mighty way. And I believe he wants to move in a mighty way again tonight. Glory. For some reason, this is a sermon that uh, he interrupts me. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I can see a gray-haired man who feels that God has overlooked him. He's been in all the so-called great revivals. And he's never received. He's growing tired of coming. Glory. God said it's because you've been in those places where I was not. For I never was in those places, for they were of the flesh. But this night, saith your father, I've heard your prayer. I heard you cry out, and this night, this very night, I will meet your need. Glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And then to that little girl that sat in the service this morning and watched the miracle take place in that little boy, God said, I haven't forgot you, honey. You came back. And because you came back, I will now meet your need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And to that one that's in the wheelchair. I mean, God's been raising a lot of people from wheelchairs. I think three last week. Well, Randy preached. Hallelujah. Glory. Tonight's your night. Get out of the chair now, and you'll find you can walk. There's no waiting. Remember we talked about that this morning. You haven't got to wait. Glory. It's like ordering something on the Internet, and you already paid for it. Well, Jesus paid for it. Amen. And now it's yours. And now it's yours. Glory. Hallelujah. You remember I talked just before we ended on our DNA? Glory. We could call it three initials. And how I said that our DNA now is the blood of our Father, Almighty God. We are children of God. The devil is afraid of our seed. He's afraid of us. He's afraid of what we might do. And he likes to lie to us. And he likes to tell us all the lies. I mean, we've heard that since election day. All the lies. Glory. And you know, they don't really know why it turned out the way it did. And you never once heard that it's because of the time we're living in that at God's time and things are ending. Did we hear that? No. They're unaware of it because they don't know God. And so they guess. And the devil uses them. Try to bring fear to us. But again tonight, he told us, we're his children. We're not going through this like a beggar. We're not going through this like a pauper. We're going through this victoriously. I liked what he said about the light. Our light is going to be so bright, and the light is not for us. It's not for us that we can find the way. It's for them that they can find their way to us. 
that they can come and get the help that they have need of. I said, the devil, he's a dream killer. And we were talking about Joseph just before I ended. Do you remember? Glory. Joseph carried in him the seed of greatness in a dream form. He was destined to be great. His brothers couldn't stop it. Those that he was sold to couldn't stop it. The prisons couldn't stop it. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. The dream seed. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. We find that in Genesis chapter 37, verses 19 through 20. We find him making his way to the top. You know, when I think about that, you know what it reminds me of? And some of you have absolutely no idea about this because you're too young. Glory. Years ago, the milkman brought our milk every morning. Glory. He put it in the nice little box we had. Glory. And you know what always rose to the top? The cream. I mean, you had to shake it up. I didn't. I liked that. I got in trouble for that, but I, I, I like the top. We're the cream. We're the cream. And God's trying to lift us to the top. Glory. Hallelujah. It was not Joseph's brother that the devil feared. It was Joseph, the dreamer. That's who he feared. You know, that's what really made his brothers fear. It was his dreams. They were afraid they'd come to pass. And his father said, wow, that's the biggest story you've ever told me. I mean, you think I'm going to bow down? Well, guess what? He bowed. He bowed. Glory. I was telling Roger earlier, somehow I measured this, or numbered this crazy. Because I'm on point five, and I couldn't find point one, two, three, or four. <laughs> so God knew where I was going to stop. Glory. Now you remember, the men of the city said, this is not right. We do not accept it. Remember, they were going to be barren, no more life. Glory, you know, that's the plan. That's the worldly plan. That's the worldly plan. There's too many of us. So the world has got a plan of making sure we don't have children. This is why they accept abortion. I mean, there's other ways to be protected in sex than abortion. There's all kind of ways. But they only want the one. Why? It kills. See, that's the devil's plan. That's the devil's plan. Glory. So, here are these men. They're satisfied with the pretty place, but they're not satisfied with their destiny. Their destiny was being swept from them. They decided their future was worth fighting for. And Christians are going to have to rise up today and fight for their future. Glory. We're going to have to make a bold stand. We're going to have to speak the word. You know, there's no miracles. There's no signs. There's no wonder unless we speak the word. Glory. I wonder how many listening to this message believe your future is worth fighting for. How many are willing to fight for your children to be delivered from the hands of the destroyers? Glory. Fight for the destiny of your grandchildren. Fight for for the destiny of your great-grandchildren. 
Are you willing? Fight for your marriage. Fight for your health. Fight for your ministry. Fight for your dreams. Come on, somebody. I, I'm trying to tell you, if you want it, you're going to have to fight for it. I'm not hearing a yes, an amen, or nothing. <laughs> Glory. The devil isn't going to sit back and watch you waltz into your destiny without a fight. He's not. I mean, if we think that, we haven't read the same book that I've read. Glory. I'll tell you. Those sons and daughters and grandchildren and young prophets and young prophetesses the apostles and the pastors and the teachers and the evangelists are going to have to walk into the promises of God, into their calling. They're going to have to do something. We got so much faults going out of the church today. It's pitiful. It's pitiful. Glory. There are so many believers today who have lost their fight. They've lost their fire. They've lost their passion. Really? I mean, I can remember when we used to go to prayer meeting. Two-thirds or more of the church was there at prayer meeting. I mean, just the visitors, basically, that come now and then weren't there. But well, when we talk about the church, and we had a church that would seat 500, that was out in the state of Washington, the church was at prayer meeting Saturday night. They were on fire. We had more moving of the gifts of the Holy Spirit on Saturday night than we had in both services put together on Sunday. It was a powerful night. Because that's what we came for. That's what we came for. And when prayer service got over, guess what? It was at least an hour, if not two hours, that we were still at the altar. People have settled down. They're satisfied just to know they're saved. They're not going to hell. They don't care about anybody else. I mean, they work right next to the people. They talk to the people. They say, oh, I don't know anybody. Oh, uh, I, I, I got to tell everybody that I can. doesn't matter whether it's McDonald's, Burger King, if we stop there because the kids want something on the way home, the teacher at school, the principal. You say, yeah, but you're a preacher. What's that got to do with it? There's a fire burning inside. That fire is burning. They're going to hell. You know, and people think we got 25 years. They think we got 10 years. They think we got five years. I don't know. I'd still believe it could happen this year. That's not over. And if this year does get over, I'll believe it'll happen next year. Glory. I'm not going to be one of those that has to get up in the morning and look, look in my closet and take my suitcase out and say, uh, now what in the world do I want to put in here? Now I could go today. You realize I can't take none of that with me? The only thing I can take with me is me. 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 Glory. Glory. So they become satisfied just to know they're saved. That's beautiful. I'm glad. But remember, one day you're going to stand face to face with Jesus Christ, and he's going to look the book over and say, Were you one of those unfaithful servants? that hid your stuff in the ground because you were afraid of me? 
and now because of that I can give you no rewards except stand at the worship altar through all of eternity. That's not for me. I love to worship. But I realize he's got jobs. He's got appointments. He's got so much that we're going to do if we've been faithful. And here are these people. They become barren, unproductive, sterile, and unable to reproduce. No spiritual births, no groanings, no travailing, no birth pains, no power to heal the sick or cast out the devils or deliver those that are bound. Glory. These men here in this story, they recognized this. They realized the problem and made a choice to change. I believe all over the world we need people to change. I mean, as a matter of fact, they're telling the Republicans right now, if you ever want to win another election, ever, ever in your life, you've got to change. Glory. If they don't, they won't win again. Glory. Hallelujah. And I think it's because some of the Christians haven't really been praying. Huh? Really seeking God. I believe somebody today is making a choice for change. The Spirit just told me that somebody is choosing to change. Amen. Glory. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I've chose to change. Amen. Glory. <laughs> point five. Isn't that a, a point six, brother? Isn't that amazing? To reverse the curse, it must become a source of of grief to you. Now, did you get that? It's got to become a source of grief. That's why I've said we've got to have that shaking. I don't want that shaking. I don't want something worse than New Jersey and New York. But well, it's coming. Because all this hasn't become a source of grief to us. You see, as long as we're willing to put up with it, we're going to have it. Huh? Glory. I remember when I was counseling people when they were getting married. I used to tell them a story, and I probably told you two that story. Glory. That make sure you're always truthful to your wife. Yes. I said it everything. Because there was a couple that loved each other very much and his wife made him a meal of something he did not like. It was disgusting. And she said, how is it, honey? Well, he didn't want to hurt her feelings. He chose to lie. He said, oh, it's beautiful. And so every now and then, he got that again. A year went by, two years went by, three years went by, and he just got to the place finally he couldn't take it no longer. And he said to her, please never cook this again. I hate it. And she said, you lied to me. And their marriage almost ended up in divorce because I counseled them. That lie seemed innocent, seemed little, but it's the little things that the devil uses that destroys the roots. It destroys the vines. Glory. As long as we're willing to put up with it, we'll have it. He was willing at first to put up with that meal. Until he couldn't no more. Remember Hannah? She was satisfied just to be the favorite wife of Elkanah. Favored by fruitlessness, blessed by barrenness, yet she was willing to put up with that. Glory. Whew. Until 
Elkanah's other wife, she's got a worse name yet, Peninnah, began to provoke her over her barrenness. Began to mock her. Huh? At first, it was just an irritation, a small irritation. She wanted to walk in love like Christians, and we should walk in love, but she could put up with that. But it continued until it reached a place of grief. Now, I'm using the right word here, grief. Grief. Vaxtation. And she cried out to God to be delivered of her curse. I believe it hasn't changed. In the, in the Bible days, it was considered a curse for a woman to be barren. That was considered a curse. Glory. So she came to the man of God and cried out to be delivered. And God delivered her from her barrenness. He opened her womb. He reversed the curse. He reversed it. Seven. You must embrace the word of God as the final authority. Glory. Hallelujah. The prophet represents the word of God. The word of God is the word of blessings. The curse may be, in fact, very real. You, know, you may have been laboring under a curse all of your life. Roger and I was talking about that on demons. He said, you mean Christians can be demon-possessed? I said, absolutely. And then, we, then I explained to him how. And they've never been set free. They know they got these things in their life they can't control. They know that they're still bothering them. They know that they crop up. Uh, we talked about Jimmy. Remember Jimmy's first fall? And he wept and he cried on TV. He repented. Glory. And then his second fall, just shortly after that, almost destroyed him. And he said, you know, I've fasted 40 days. I've denied myself of everything that I could. I sought God. I wept. I cried. But when this come on me, I had to go do what I knew I shouldn't be doing. And a man by the name of James Robinson, a Baptist, that got filled with the Holy Ghost, went and cast many demons out of this great evangelist that we all knew. He had all those demons for all those years and didn't know it because his denomination said you can't be demon-possessed. You're a Christian. So the curse may be very real. You know, it may be there under sight. And if it is, then we've got to go to where we can get help. All right. There's all kind of curses. There's the curse of sickness and disease, curse of poverty and lack, where no matter what you do or how hard you work, you just can't get out of debt. Remember the Bible says, now listen, the Bible says when you're under that, it's like you got a hole in your pocket and the money runs out like sand. Nothing you can do about it except go to God. There's the curse of drug addiction, alcoholism, the curse of fear. There are generational curses that run through generations like the curse of divorce. Now, in our family, that, that was a big curse. Glory, I'll tell you. Whew. Praise God. I'm the first generation in my son and my cousin Nelson, we never got a divorce. But what happened? We found Jesus. We found Jesus. That, that was a curse. The marrying Evanses. Glory. 
as far back as you can go, your family line. Every marriage ended in divorce. And they really did. There's the curse of witchcraft, where others operate under the power of Satan, pronouncing dark saying and pronouncing evil over your life. You know, sometimes we hang around with those people and we don't even know it. We had a lady that come to the tent meeting. And everybody thought they cast the demons out of her. And I said, no, you did not. It's still in there. It's still in there. Glory. And finally she come to me, you remember? And I told her what the curse was. I said, you got a controlling spirit. And she said, a what? I said, your husband's girlfriend, who is your beautician, gets nice little pieces of your hair, and she has a curse on you. And you need to tell him, and you need to get help. So she went home. Some of you should remember this. And he got upset. All six foot, three or four of him, 200 and some pounds, he come here. He was going to tell that preacher. He went through the door. He got into our foyer. He took one look in here, and he didn't dare come in. And he took his wife, and they left. We've never seen him since. Glory. And she never got set free, but she could have. She could have. There's a thousand different curses. But there's only one cure. It's a universal cure. It carries every curse, big or small. And you're going to think right away, it's deliverance. No. you got to have deliverance. It's the blessings. It's the blessing. The blessing is, the, is greater than the curses. So when we come to God and jump into the first part of the book of De Deuteronomy, chapter 28, we get the blessings. And he breaks the curse. He reverses the curse. Think about that. I come to tell you, I don't care what kind of curse has been over your life or how long it's been there. It doesn't matter. If it's come down through one, two, three, four generations, that's no big deal to God. The blessing is greater than the curse. And we as Christians, that's where we want to live. The Bible tells the story about a backslidden slidden prophet who hired himself. Now listen, he hired himself. This is greed. This is a spirit of greed working big time in him. He wanted that money. He wanted what they were going to give to him. He wanted that, you know. He couldn't be satisfied. Glory. And he put a curse on himself. He put a curse on the children of Israel, the children of God. Numbers 22, 6. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Free to venture, I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom thou bless is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. Who said that? No, that was a prophet. That's right. And he had yet to hear from his donkey. Can you believe that? A donkey? Then in Numbers 22, 41, and it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, false worship, that thence he might see the uttermost part of the people. He wants him to see what he wants him to curse. Numbers 23, 1 through 2. And Balaam said unto Balak, 
Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. Perfect number. I mean, what is this guy doing? God's told him no. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. He was told not to do that. Glory. Balaam had every intention of cursing the children of Israel. And he made every effort. But he just couldn't do it. He couldn't make it stick. Glory. Three different times he went through this program and set up his altar and made his sacrifice in an effort to curse God's people. Listen, when you're walking in the right place, it can't curse you. <laughs> Deuteronomy 23.5. They hired against thee, Balaam, to curse thee. Nevertheless, the Lord would not hearken to Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing. He blessed Israel. Numbers 22.11. And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse my enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. Glory. Did that end it? No. You see, sometimes Christians are like this. They want the money. They want the power. They want the fame. They want the house that the Joneses couldn't have. They want the car that the Joneses couldn't have. And we've seen it all over. All these people losing their houses. And all at once we get sorry for them. But they bought things that they couldn't afford. Now, I wish it ended there, but Balaam said to Balak, I can tell you how to destroy God's children. He's going to get out of it now. He's not going to have anything to do with it. He died a terrible life. You need to study that. He said, just bring in the heathens. Let them a women, let the Israelite ladies see how handsome they are. Let the men see how handsome the women are. And pretty soon they'll enter marriage. Well, we sure saw a lot of that today, haven't we, all over the world. Because Balaam, yeah, we've seen that too. Because Balaam knew that God had told them they couldn't do that. He even tells us that in the New Testament. Be not unequally yoked together with a non-believer. But we don't believe it. I mean, if we love them or we think we do. All right. In closing today, I'm closing by telling you, today there is a divine reversal taking place. Curses are being broken. Decisions are being overturned. God is reversing the curse. You see, he desires that we all get to heaven. He doesn't want any man to perish, he said. This is not his choice. It's not his desire. Some curses are generational and come down to us because of the sins of our fathers. But there are some curses that come to us Listen careful, glory, because of our disobedience. And then there are curses that are the product of Satan's conspiracy and design. And many of God's people have been laboring under a curse. But today, the men of the city have come to this right place. And if you're listening to this, I believe you come to the right place. And if you're here, I believe you come to the right place. Glory. There is a blessing in this house. And his name is Jesus. Jesus is not just a blesser. 
He is the blessing. He's the blessing. Glory. And the blessing is greater than any curse. Glory. When that salt came into contact with the cursed waters, the curse had to go. The salt is a symbol of the Christian life, the spirit and the power of God. We're the salt of the earth. That's what the Bible says. Glory. And out of the same place from where death came, life began to flow. Glory. And the Bible says the waters were healed from that day forward. Did you hear that? Glory. I don't know who it is that this is for today. Probably all of us. But God said to tell you, this is your day for a divine reversal. Now, tomorrow's not your day. He said, this is the day. This is the day. Even for those out there listening to the video, this is your day. The, the curse is being turned into a blessing. What the devil meant for evil, God is making it to work for good. Glory. The same place that was known as the fount of bitter waters become known as the fount of blessings. And it's because a blessing came to that place. And every tree and every thirsty traveler got blessed. And from that same place where there was hopelessness and despair and death came joy and peace and life. Somebody today, you experienced the curse of bitter waters. I don't know what from. But I know that that curse has taken place in your life. And I know this. The blessing is greater. And God is wanting to set you free. To heal those waters today. And to turn it around and make your life a blessing. I know God wants that. I know it's hard to believe sometimes how God can take those hard places in our lives. And those bitter places. And cause them to be a source of hope and faith. But it's happening right now. I know it is right in here. I can feel it. Glory. The power of the blessing is moving into those areas of your life right now in Jesus' name. It's there. It's there. What do you want to reverse? What do you want removed from your life? What do you want God to do for you? Father, we thank you that your word never goes out and returns void. We thank you, Father, that you're reversing it right now. They're escaping from the fate that would come because of the curse in their life. They're escaping it. You're setting them free. You're healing them. You're delivering them. You're performing miracles right now. That man that's got the braces, he can throw them away right now. That man who can hardly hear your hearing is being restored. That one with a bad back, God is delivering you right now. He's setting you free. Those that don't have a job, you will get a far better job and God shall be your source. Those that want to live on welfare or want to get off, that they can move into the blessings of God and be blessed. This is the hour. This is the day of blessings. And God is moving powerfully. I've noticed that last week there was a change in the messages. This week, another change. Because God is moving. Don't be afraid of the cliff. Be afraid of the rapture. Make sure you're ready. For if you miss the rapture, all you've got is the raft. The raft of God. And God said, I love you. I want to set you free this night. 
Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it never goes out and returns void. We thank you for everything you're doing and everything you're going to do. And right now we just give you the praise. The altar is...